Hi guys, Mac here again. So today, quite a quick video. A friend of mine recently during the week was having some problems trying to import some relatively large PST files into Office 365. Now, it turns out he wasn't aware there is a, an import process. So I've taken it through the process and it, it's really quick, really clean. And I thought I'd take you through it as well. So what we're looking at here is a brand new Office 365 tenancy. If we pop into our admin there, if we have a look at our users, you should see it's a clean tenancy with Office 365 E5 licenses. What I also have here are a set of PST files. In fact, they're all a copy of the same PST file just for the purposes of this demo. They're all about six gig in size. Now, what we want to do is get all of these PSTs imported into all of these users. Now, like I say, there is a real simple way of doing this and I'm gonna take you through that process. Now, there is a prereq that we need to meet in terms of permissions and so let me show you what I mean. What I'm going to do is just jump into the protection portal, which is protectionoffice.com. What we're interested in here is the information governance. And in there, you'll see that there's an import option. If we click the import option, well, what we want to be able to do is import PST files. Now, what you'll see by default is we'll get an error here saying to create jobs, you must be assigned the mailbox import export role in Exchange Online. Also, it'll tell you that it can take up to 24 hours before that role actually gets assigned, which can be very annoying. It doesn't typically take a day to do, but it can take several hours. So let's go and sort that part. And then what we'll do is we'll come back to this once that role is actually assigned. Now it is pretty easy to do. So back from our admin, what we're gonna do is pop into our Exchange Online admin console. There it is. And what we're gonna do is go into the admin roles. Now there are several ways of doing this. You can either add it to an existing role or what we're going to do is create a new one. I'm just gonna call it mailbox import. Now in terms of the role, if you get a list of the roles and move down there, you should see there, there's an option there for mailbox import export. So we're going to add that. And in terms of users or members of this role, I'm just gonna add my admin account there. So we'll click save, let this run. Like I say, it can take a little while to apply. So what I'm gonna do is leave this now and we'll come back to it once this is applied and I'll take you through the rest of the process. Okay, so I ended up leaving this overnight, so I'm not quite sure exactly how long it took, but let's get in and we'll just make sure that that error message has gone. So I'm just gonna open up the admin panel and we can see the users that we want to import. There are all the users here. There are our PST files up on the right-hand side there. So where we want to go, we want to go into the protection portal, which is protection.office.com, and we're gonna set up a new import job. So we want to go down to information governance on the left and we're going to go to import. Now, as you can see, we're no longer getting that error message about the role. So obviously that role has applied and we are good to go. So let's go through the process because it is actually really straightforward. So I'm going to click on that option there, which is import PST files and I am going to create a new import job. Now, if you have already run several other import jobs, you'll see them all listed here. This is a fresh, empty tenancy, so I'm just gonna go with a brand new import job. I'm gonna call it Import Demo, and it will walk you through the process to achieve what we want to do. So I'm gonna say I wanna upload my data because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to upload these PST files and leave Azure and Microsoft to get on with the ingestion into those mailboxes. Now this bit can get a little bit tricky. It looks harder than it actually is. What we're going to do is we are going to get a path to an Azure upload location. You see that link there, show network upload. Click that, it can take a few minutes to get the key. There we go, you can see that URL there. So I'm just gonna copy it to the clipboard there by clicking that button. Now I have the command already in my notepad here. We're going to use this to use a AZ copy to copy our PST files up to Azure. If you look in the description, there is a link to my blog which has all these commands in. I'll also link to the main articles that explains how this process works. But what I'm gonna do, we'll have a look at the command here. It's AZ copy. That's the source of where the PST files are, which you can see up there on the right hand side. 
And in the destination there, we want to put this URL that we've just created. So I'm just going to paste it in there. A couple of things in here, you can see that I've got a log set up. Make sure the log goes somewhere where it's writable, because if it isn't, it'll fail. And there's a couple other switches on here that seem to make the process a little bit more reliable. But like I say, go to my main blog on this process and it'll have a bit more information on what all these switches mean. So I'm just going to copy that there. Now, before we can use AZ Copy, we need to get it installed. So it does give you the option to download as your AZ Copy here. Now, I've already got it installed. If you haven't, just go and get the download and get it installed. So what I'm going to do now is just fire up a DOS prompt. Now we need to find where this Azure Copy command is. Now, the simplest way to do that is just do a dir forward slash s. It will go off and find it for us. So you can see that's where it is. So I'm just going to copy that path and pop into there. Now, you remember that command we did earlier, this one, we need to now run this. So I'm going to copy it and just paste it into the command bar here. Now what's happening is the unit has gone off and it's copying up all of those PSTs to Office 365. We have a look at our task manager here. You can see the Ethernet is showing the upload. So we're getting a pretty good upload speed of about 500 megabytes per second. So let's let this finish and we'll come back to it when it's done. OK, so that copy operation is now completed, so we can close all that down now. So if we get back to the portal here, it tells you what the process is. So we've now completed the copy, so we can click I've done uploading my file. The other thing to consider is this element here. I have access to the mapping file. I'm going to click yes, and I'm going to show you the mapping file. So on my desktop, I have this file here, and it is a small CSV. And what it does is it maps the PSTs that we've just imported to the accounts that we're going to import them to. Now, again, on the main blog article, I'll leave a download link to this template. So if you want to go and take it. So you can see we've got the workload specified there. We've got the PST files specified, and I've just noticed the mistake. So let me quickly update those. There we go, I forgot the extensions on the end. So you can see we've got all the PST files and we've also got the target mailboxes that we want these PSTs to be imported into. You will also see this column here, is it an archive? Now I'm gonna say false in those. I've seen a lot of references that say you can just leave that blank, but for some reason I never seem to have any luck with that. So I tend to set it to false. Now of course, if you do want to import into the archive, then set that to true. The next thing you wanna make sure is in there is just the path that you want the mail imported into. Just having the forward slash there just puts it in the root. Now, once you have this file, make sure it's saved as a CSV because you are going to need it in a moment. I have access to the mapping file selected, so we're gonna click next. So we're gonna select that mapping file that we've just edited. There we go, and we're also going to validate it as well, and it will now go and check the contents of that file to make sure it has the right information in. So you can see that this has validated. Okay, so I'm gonna click Save. So you can see now that we have successfully added the import job and that Office 365 will notify us when it is ready to be actually imported into the Office 365 tenancy. So I'm just going to click close now. You can see the job there. It is showing analysis in progress. It can take a little while, this piece, depending on how many mailboxes and the size of the PST files that you're trying to import. So I'm going to leave this running now and we'll come back to it, hopefully when the analysis piece has completed. So that took about an hour for that analysis to complete just on those PST files that we are importing. You can see now that there is an option that says ready to import to Office 365. So I'm going to click on that. Now in this wizard, you can see all of the PSTs that we've uploaded. And at the top there, there is a button that says import to Office 365. So this is where the magic bit happens. So let's click on that. Now we do have the option here to filter the data before importing it into 365. So if your PSTs go back over several years, you could say, for example, I only want to import, say, the last 12 months of data. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to import absolutely everything into the mailboxes just so we can see the way it works for the purposes of this demo. So I'm going to select that and click Click next. You can see now that it's saying that there's going to be about 31 gigabytes of data imported. And I'm going to say yes, get on with it. There we go. So we've now kicked off the last piece of the job, which is to actually import the stuff from Azure direct into our mailboxes within Office 365. You can see there that the progress will be shown. I do find that that doesn't tend to update, by the way. You can often see that it looks like it's doing nothing, and then all of a sudden it'll be at 100% for the mailboxes. So don't get too concerned about that. I'm going to click close. So what we'll do is we'll leave this running, and we'll come back to when the import is finished, and we'll see what the final state of those mailboxes actually is.
Okay, so we're back in the portal again. Now, I left this running overnight, and unfortunately, there was an Office 365 and Azure authentication failure last night, which caused us a few issues with the demo. But as you can see here, the job has completed, if we have a look at it. There we go. You can see all the imports have run there. It's, they're all the same PST, so uh, they should all be the same. Now, of course, what we can do is we can log on to an individual user, and you will see that all of that mail is there, and it's in the same location that those PST files had the mail as well. So as you can see, it is a real simple way to get large PSTs imported in bulk into Office 365. I'm surprised more people don't make use of it. I mean, over the years, I've used it for all kinds of things, even like cutover migrations, and all that sort of stuff and I have found it ruthlessly reliable and the performance not too bad at all. Any questions drop them in the comments below I'll try and answer them for you. I will also put a link down to the main blog article that has all those commands and also a link to the proper website in the proper description about what this service is capable of.